It is time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, where we are about to embark on a little, like, micro-tournament uh, for innovation and in its various expansions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing four three-player games that focus on uh, just the base set and one of the expansions. Um, this is going to be really fun for me. I uh, And then we're going to culminate in a game that, you know, whoever's left, I guess, or maybe we'll have some more, like, elimination rounds, we'll see how we do it, uh, that has all the expansions, which is my preferred way to play. But it's fun to, to play just with the base set and an expansion, uh, just to kind of really flesh out what that expansion is like. And since we have some newer ones out, I thought that would be edifying to some people who like the game, but maybe haven't um, tried these, these newer expansions. I was gifted them, which is pretty nice for me. So, um, we're going to be focusing on Cities of Destiny first. That's the pink expansion. Sometimes easier to remember the colors than the names because colors are so vibrant. Uh, we have th three players from the Baralti leg who all just happen to be available. And they're going to play together again. They've had so much experience with each other. That was a, that was a, um, a fun leg of the tournament. Uh, we have Vaughn and Junior and Pinky. And I guess we'll just get started... Maybe I'll explain a little bit of the basics of what this expansion has to offer, and then we'll get started. Let's do that. All right, so a big purpose, I think, of this uh, cities, the two newest expansions, the, the pink one and the purple one, cities and artifacts, um, is to make the meld action more fun. Um, so what, how cities does that is when you meld, you get, you get to do something generally. Not always, but a lot of the cities do that. If you notice, they don't have dogma actions. They just have an action that you get to do when you meld. So this one lets you splay this way. Um, and they have other effects. I will explain them as, as play goes on. I'm not going to uh, front load too much. But basically, cities are a lot more icons or just different special activities you get when you meld a card. How you get cities cards is if you meld a new color. So that's another way that um, they make melding more fun. Um, or if you splay a color a certain direction. Um, oh, and you can't have any cities in your hand. And that's basically it. There's some other stuff, but that'll come out through play. It's, a, it's I think, a much a simpler expansion than Artifacts of History, and it's enjoyable. I've enjoyed it. Let's play. We've gone around, and Vaughn is in the middle of her second turn, so everyone's had the same number of actions. The first player does so, only gets one action. She started out with clothing. Um, did it. That was her first action. Let Pinky copy. So Pinky's got some score on the board. Junior is base. Uh, just kind of drew a card and melded a card. Pinky melded a card and drew a card, I think, as well. Um, Vaughn has been doing some scoring with clothing. She's been kind of lucky with her colors. She's the only person with green and red, so she's been able to score a couple times, which gives her enough points to get the first achievement of the game. We're playing to six achievements right now. Let's continue, and I will update when something exciting happens. Nothing's really happened with the cities yet. People have gotten to draw cities, but no one has yet melded one. We'll see if maybe Junior does. I want to scrap, uh, mend that a little bit. There's been some kind of modified city play where characters or players would do something that they wouldn't otherwise do just because they get to bonus draw with it. So um, Pinky, on her turn, she had some options, but she went with splaying mainly because that allowed her to feed cards into her hand. Uh, she might otherwise have just done a standard draw or something like that, but she had this code of laws, so she was able to splay some cards um, and then draw another city, tuck it, splay again. So it, it helped her to get more done on her turn because of the change in rules that comes with the city's expansion. All right, Junior had, a, had some choices to start the game. He could have jumped ahead in age. He had tools to start out, but he decided to do the masonry route to get that early um, monument achievement, and he's gonna about to do it now. He just drew, and now he's going to meld a bunch of cards with um, towers on them. I think he's going to do this one, and no, he's going to do this one first. So this icon here, lets you search for cards of that icon. Basically, you draw a number of cards equal to that age, and then however many of them have that icon, you just get to keep. Uh, not super useful in era one, but as you get higher, that you can end up with a lot of cards doing that. So he's going to meld a bunch of cards and get the monument. So we have a tie now, one to one between Junior and Vaughn. Still a very early game. 
Okay, Pinky just melded a, a card with that search icon, so you'll get to see how it works. Now, unfortunately, oh, actually, that's okay. Um, if there had only been one two here, she'd only get to look at one card. It's not, it's like the one rule in the game that kind of um, gets rid of the thing where if an age is empty, you just go up to the next age. You only do it with the brown cards of the age of the card, okay? So they can become obsolete pretty quick. Unfortunately, no leaves there. She can look at these cards, though, and decide which one she might want to draw, because I think drawing is going to be her next age. Uh, oh, monotheism is kind of interesting. I think she might actually go with the monotheism, because Vaughn still has all those colors that I don't like that, that no one else has. Oh, she only has red. But she doesn't have... Yeah, she could... I think she's going to take the monotheism. So basically, she returned them in the order that she wanted, and then she drew. Vaughn's clothing has been, has been good for her. Um, she's used it once again. Got another card on the board, which is nice. Um, and then she also gets to take an achievement, because she's got 10 points and a 2 on the board. So Vaughn is pulling out ahead. Still a close game. Let's go on to Junior. Pinky's monotheism kicked in, and Vaughn just lost her clothes. Uh, Junior also lost a green card. I don't really remember what it was, but it was a 2 green card. Something probably to do with scoring or something like that. So first blood drawn um, due to the deadly monotheism. I got to draw and tuck some ones, or actually threes. Vaughn hit Pinky back with double city-state attacks, uh, which uh, allowed her to take cards with towers from Pinky's board. Um, if Pinky had known she was going to do it twice, she probably would have given her the monotheism first, thus... Uh, d uh, getting rid of the action, but she just, she kind of was thinking, oh, I'll give her the one I'm most okay with losing. Um, so damaging, damaging counterattack by Vaughn. Junior remained unscathed. Let's see what he's going to do. Junior's been working some math, did some uh, reformation, which everyone got to copy, but he was okay with sharing it because it gave him an extra card draw, which you can use to do more math. Um, Pinky is going to be melding this. Now this has a plus icon, that means she gets to draw one of one higher. Um, another thing the cities does is it kind of mitigates the power of cards like mathematics, which let you draw cards of higher age, by letting you jump, uh, jump ahead a different way, just through the cities. So that's another thing the cities does, is it kind of um, changes up the dynamic that's normally present within the, the basic cards. Um, in a number of ways, but this is one of the ways it does it. Um, just by having this icon that you can just meld a city and go up an age, it makes it so that someone with math has a harder time dominating an age. Which we're seeing here, play out before our eyes. How, how exciting and interesting. Vaughn, for her turn, used Calendar twice, which uh, Pinky got to copy at both times. They both have seven leaves. That's a whopping amount of leaves. Um, to get a bunch of cards in her hand, she has a plan. We'll see if it, if it pays off. So, Planning can be dangerous in this game because the situation is so subject to change. But sometimes a plan does come together and it, it can trigger like, like magic. Kind of like, you know, Junior had the plan of using masonry to meld a bunch of cards. He had to draw a bunch of cards to do that. Um, that could have backfired. Someone could have started taking cards from his hand or they could have covered up masonry somehow. So... You know, it's still good to try to do, but you you want to kind of be fluid with it when, that, you know, if situations change, you got to be okay with working with the new reality. So if, if she's unable to do her plan, she still probably has a lot of cards in her hand or she still has some other option. You just got to be able to shift. It's okay. Breathe. And after Junior did one mathematics, um, the plan did change. She was going to try it. She was going to steal Reformation from him and then tuck a bunch of cards and build up her board. She started off with like a kind of a heavy scoring strategy, so her board is a little inferior. Luckily, since these people have been sharing a lot, um, she's not doing too bad. But anyway, so that just got covered up, so that's not going to work for her. Um, Junior had a beneficial sharing with Pinky. He got, uh, got to draw a card. Uh, from from sharing mathematics, so now he can just do another mathematics without having to do the wait to draw another uh, draw a card first. He could also use astronomy to go up, but I think he's going to just go ahead and math again. 
putting some distance between him and Vaughn, only one age between him and Pinky since she got to share. Classification. Now classification is actually an opportunity for Vaughn. Um, green is a very dangerous color to have out right now for anyone other than Vaughn because she has this monotheism which is what Pinky used to take colors that she didn't have. Green is the only color Vaughn doesn't have. So having this down, she can score this on her turn, which kicks, which, uh, kicks Junior back in age, and also gives her enough to achieve. So we'll see if she decides to do that when it's her turn. It's not, it's Pinky's turn. Let's take turns, people. Go ahead, Pinky. So now it is Vaughn's turn. She successfully took the card from Junior. However, she doesn't have a three on her board, so she can't take the next achievement. So she's probably just gonna need to meld a card um, and then be ready to achieve next turn. But now it's like very telegraphed what she's going to do, uh, which is, which can be dangerous. We'll see what happens. Here's Vaughn's hand. She actually has an interesting melding choice. Um, Whatever she melds is going to either uh, ruin her ability to use monotheism in the future, either by covering up or giving her a green card, or make it so that she can't achieve next turn because she'd be covering up this bonus. Uh, so that's going to be a tough choice for her. I think she's going to not worry about the monotheism and keep the, keep the bonus up. So does she want to... Yeah, so she's either got to go green or purple. I'll figure that out, and we'll probably just move on. I won't get back to you on that. Surprise, I'm getting back to you on it. She went with green simply, uh, well, for, for a number of reasons, but mainly so that she could get a cities card. See, the cities add some, like, some nice, nice little treats for melding. We've been talking a lot about the past because uh, we're just, I'm kind of giving you after action reports. Let's do a during action report because Junior is going to do astronomy. So we're going to draw and reveal a six. If it's green or blue, meld it and repeat this dogma effect. It's not. It's purple. Okay, so now he has this though, which is great. So he's going to go ahead and do it. You may display your blue cards right. It's difficult to do with my left hand. Draw and meld a seven. Ba -dum. And he's going to get a pink city card. So he's going forward in age another way. Okay, and I think that'll do it for this episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Let's just take a like a broader look at the whole game state. Okay, so we see Junior with one achievement, no score. Um, really kind of mono blue light bulb guy right now is kind of where he's going. He's Trying to stay ahead in age, but Pinky is keeping up with him. She's got a seven card in her hand thanks to these city cards. He's been doing it through going forward in age through Dogma. She's been doing it through city cards. Um, so that's where that's at. Pinky is kind of a, a mixed bag. She's got a decent board, probably the strongest board overall in terms of cards down. It's hard to say, though, since uh, because we don't have a lot of... Uh, no one else is really as splayed as she is. No, Junior is kind of close. Just seems, she feels like she has more. Uh, maybe it's because he just has so much of the blue. It's, it's kind of, um, I suppose I could count, but we're doing a broader view. We don't have time to count. Um, got some points. No achievements yet. So she, she's yet to gain real traction. Um, but definitely been affecting the game, affecting the dynamics between... Uh, everyone and everything as everyone does just by being there even if you stand still in the water the water has to move around you um, Vaughn she has got the most points as we know she's got the most achievements she's about to take another one she could be pulling off this game though it's really hard to say she's she's way far back in age she's still in the fours everyone else is in the sevens so if they can get a card, the cards get much stronger as you get eight uh, higher, and they can flip things pretty quick. Uh, she really needs to pull out a win right now. If you look at her score, it's negative 644. Um, I actually was trying to find some information out about the tournament. This is kind of an aside. And I had said that negative 700 was the cutoff, not 750. Um, I guess Dick is just going to be kind of grandfathered in there. And maybe we'll stick with negative 750. Hopefully no one got cut off at negative 700. But, all right, let's look at everyone else's score on there. Pinky's at negative 560. She also could be in danger of elimination if she loses. Junior is a little safer than everyone else. Um, but we'll find out what happens next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament English Schlag Innovation Cities of Destiny.